Shalom, and I greet you on behalf of Salem Bible Church and our pastors, Pastor Emeritus Jasper Williams, Jr. and Senior Pastor Joseph L. Williams, and I am Elder Valerie Bell with the Atlanta campus, and I welcome you to Noonday Bible Study. We have been blessed by our previous instructors leading us in the Bible study series comprised of five elements of self-destruction. These are flaws of the spirit, but you and I can be loosed from having self-destructive behavior. To recap these elements, they are shame, uncontrollable thoughts, compulsions, fear, and today is our final lesson, and we will focus on the fifth element of self-destructive behavior, which is hopelessness. Our focal scriptures outlining our studies will be taken from Psalm 34, 17 through 20 in the Amplified Version. And it states, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their distress and troubles. The Lord is near to the heartbroken and he saves those who are crushed in spirit, contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sin. Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescues him from them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. In today's lesson, we will not only focus on understanding what a state of hopelessness is, however, we will learn how to turn our circumstances into exercising our faith and being overcomers because we will know that God is with us. We will learn to transition from the facts of despair and self-destructive behavior into faith as we travel through this journey. So what is hopelessness? By definition, it is an emotion characterized by lack of hope, a state of despair, lack of optimism and passion, Someone who has become hopeless may no longer value things that they thought were once important. This emotion is often associated with a lack of inspiration as well as feelings of being powerless, helpless, abandoned, oppressed, and feeling like you're not valuable anymore. What can cause this state of mind? It can be as a result of a grief, due to the loss of a loved one or a friend, a divorce, broken relationships, a prolonged illness, a trauma, failures, disappointments, a loss of a job, or any type of catastrophic incident that occurred in your life. Does that sound like any type of circumstance you may have experienced? Well, I tell you, I believe we have all experienced feeling a level of despair even if it slipped into your consciousness and took you off guard. And some reactions to these occurrences in life can take you full blast into self-destruction that you later will regret. What regrettable behavior or actions can result just after feeling a hopelessness occurrence? Let's take drug addiction, alcoholism, violent behavior, deep depression and loneliness, disobedience, sorrow, sinful actions, negativity, and a bad attitude, self-pity, and uncontrollable anger. I can tell you an example of uncontrollable anger. I just witnessed. I was in the store last weekend and heard this lady screaming to the employees who were helping another customer. And she said there was no one in the lawn and gardening area to help her. And she continued to just lash out. 
and demand someone to check her out at the register with her one item in her hand. And she continued to lash out to the employees and they tried to calm her down. And I thought to myself, she was not concerned about this vase in her hand. It was an underlining issue that, was dealing with, that she was dealing with. She pushed her to the extreme of her excessive anger and it caused a reaction to the employees. So with these type of uh, behaviors, our goal today is to understand we can rest on the hope in God to remove us from the grips of despair and learn how we can be loosed through the word of God. Let's see what the word tells us. And I will share with you four points to take away from this lesson today. Point one, you are not alone with experiencing hopeless, despairing moments. How will you respond? Here are a couple of examples of biblical figures who experienced depression and hopelessness to remind us that we're not alone in our battles of this stronghold. Let's take David. He was troubled and was on an emotional roller coaster with feelings of guilt, sin, despair, loneliness, stricken with grief and shame. And he cried out in Psalm 42 and 11. He says, why thy soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? But then he said, but put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. You see, David recognized his weaknesses, confessed his sins and cried out for help, seeking the Lord to deliver him. And yet David still had a desire within his heart to worship the Lord. David's honesty with his own weakness and sin gives us hope who struggle today. Let's take Jeremiah. In my studies, it tells us that he wrestled with great loneliness, feelings of defeat and insecurity. He was also known as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah suffered from constant rejection by the people. He loved and he reached out to. God had called him to preach, yet he would not marry. He had no children. He lived alone. He ministered alone. He was poor and ridiculed. And one of his lowest moments in Jeremiah 20 and 14, he states, Cursed be the day I was born. Why did I ever come out of the womb? to see trouble and sorrow and to end my days in shame. He still demonstrated great spiritual faith and strength, yet we see his transparency as he wrestled with despair and a great sense of loneliness. Jeremiah also knew God was with him. We see in these examples that God rescues them from their distress and troubles because he hears their cry out for help. They had faith to believe God was with them and they would be delivered. So don't be discouraged, be encouraged. You are not alone. God hears you and you can be loosed. Point two, pray to the Father. The Lord is near to the heartbroken and saves the crushed in spirit. Pray, be truly sorry for your sin and be regretful. Our sinful actions or behaviors can be as a result of hopelessness that we will soon regret. Yes, sin causes self-destructive behavior that can take you to a place where you don't even recognize yourself. Many times things don't always go according to plan. And sometimes you may suddenly find yourself in a state of depression and despair. And all you have is just enough strength to whisper a prayer. And then there are times you need to release and cry out to the Lord for help. No matter how you connect with the Lord, you must pray to seek after him 
and to strengthen your relationship with the Father. He hears you. The Holy Spirit is moving on your behalf. You know, as the song says, you may have doubts and fears, your eyes filled with tears, hurts and pain. But Jesus is a friend who watches over you day and night. Go to him in prayer and he knows your every care. Just have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry and he'll answer you by and by. Feel the prayer wheel turning and know that the fire, that's that spirit of God burning. Just have a little talk with Jesus and I tell you, he'll make it all right. In 1 Chronicles 16 and 11, it says, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. So through prayer, you can break the chain of hopelessness and be loosed. Point three, Jesus knows. Yes, he knows. I mentioned a couple of biblical figures who experienced hopelessness and despair previously in the lesson. However, I saved the most important one to share with you now. Jesus knew what was to come before him very, very soon. He knew what he was called to do. He had to fulfill his mission, but it would be with great suffering, pain, and anguish. Isaiah prophesied that Christ would be a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief in Isaiah 53 and three. Even in the garden, through the night, Jesus prayed all alone, calling out to the Father, asking him, for another way. In Mark 14, 34 and 36, I'm paraphrasing. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And he said, stay with me. Stay here and keep a watch. And he fell down on the ground and he prayed that if it was possible for the hour to just pass from him. And he called out to the Father and he said, everything is possible for you. But then he said, take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Although Jesus was called for this journey of tremendous suffering, he was willing to endure and pay the price on our behalf in order for us to have true life, everlasting life. And that's ultimate love. We can be assured in whatever we face, Jesus understands our weakness, sorrows, and the greatest times of temptation and despair. Because you know what? He too traveled that road, but yet he was without sin. In John 10 and 14, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I know my name and my own know me. That's that relationship. He knows all about us. He knows our every need and he loves us. And because we know he knows us, we have comfort and knowing that he will rescue us and we can be loosed. Point four, make a choice. Choose to have faith and serve the Lord. Choose to serve others and choose to worship even in the midst of your weakest and darkest hours. You may have been in a state of feeling hopeless, but we don't have to stay there. The word says the joy of the Lord is your strength in Nehemiah 8 and 10. This will be the time to restore and to renew your state of being. So get your joy back because we know he has never left us through it all. God was with us in the past, and then he will be with us even sometimes if he has to still carry us. But we know he's with us forevermore. Now, to sum up the four previous points, striving, which means to be determined, to be an overcomer. In Romans 12 and 12, it says, rejoice in hope. 
Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Yes, we're continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength through prayer. I want you to proclaim over your life right now and pray over yourself. And let's just pray this prayer. I am filled with the hope of the presence and power of God within me. I know all things are possible with God if I believe. You see, the power of God will dispel fear and doubt, hopelessness and despair, and instill in you hope, healing, and deliverance. I know you can do it. I know we can do it, because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I pray you received this message and you are encouraged to seek after the Lord in everything you do. Yes, Jesus Christ is the answer and you can be loosed today. I would now like to invite you to participate in one of the SBC growth groups to further discuss our Bible lessons each week. You can sign up by going to SalemBibleChurch.org Click on the link for Loosed, and at the bottom, click the tab, Join a Growth Group. Click on Learn More, fill in the requested information, and submit, and you will be assigned to a virtual group. Thank you for joining today, and we will close our Bible study out with a prayer. Let's pray. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Blessings be unto you and shalom. I am loose, loose from infirmities and disabilities, loose from all that hinders me. Nothing can hold me now, I'm standing on solid ground, the word of the Lord. Sunsets free is free indeed. My chains are broken. Thank God.